Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be looking at a quintic equation. We have z to the fifth power plus z equals i and we're going to be looking at the solutions of this quintic equation. Now when you get a quintic equation, unfortunately there's no formula that you can use, but you can try to factor it. Especially this is a very depressed quintic. It's missing the quartic, it's missing the quadratic term, and it's also missing the cubic term. So let's go ahead and try to factor this. z to the fifth plus z minus i. Obviously we want to solve this equation, set this equal to zero, but in order to be able to solve this equation, we need to factor it first, right? How do we factor something like this? Well, z to the fifth plus z minus i can hopefully be factored, that's our hope, into a cubic and a quadratic. Because you could also do a linear term, but it is probably going to be contained in one of these. So we should be able to do a cubic and, because 5 is odd, we can't do two quadratics. So let's go and write it as z cubed plus az squared plus bz plus c and then instead of uh, using you know more variables I'm going to try to cut down on the number of variables by introducing z squared plus dz right and then instead of the constant term since I need to get a negative i I'm just going to replace this with i over c make sense because when I distribute I get negative i from there we could even reduce this problem uh, kind of a little bit more, such as looking at the coefficient of a z to the fourth power. Where does z to the fourth power come from? It comes from the product of z cubed and z and z squared and z squared. That's the only way you can get z to the fourth from here. And notice that when I multiply the z to the fourth powers here, for example, z cubed and dz, that gives me dz to the fourth. And then when I multiply these two things, that gives me a z to the fourth. In other words, this needs to be zero because there is no z to the fourth in the original equation. But guess what? That means d plus a needs to be zero, or we can write d as negative a. So we can go ahead and replace d with negative a, which is going to be a little simpler. So let's go ahead and replace this d with negative a and now our equation hopefully will be a little nicer, okay? Or nicer looking. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Now, if you distribute everything, you're going to get a lot of terms, right? For example, you're going to get z to the fifth, but we already have that. That's all good. z to the fourth canceled out, so we're good. Let's go ahead and focus on z cubed, z squared, and z and constant term. So how do you get a z cubed? I multiply a z squared by negative a z, so that's negative a z cubed. And then another way to get z cubed is multiply the z cubed by negative i over c. That's going to give you negative i over c z cubed. And then there's one more way to get a z cubed, which is b z and z squared, and that's going to be b z cubed. If you kind of take out the factors b minus a minus i over c, that'll be the coefficient of z cubed. And guess what? There's no z cubed here either, so the coefficient of z cubed must be zero, which gives us an equation, right? That's going to give us one equation. And for the z squared, obviously, we're going to get something similar. If you multiply a z squared by negative i over c, you're going to get negative a i over c times z squared. And then I have more z squared, obviously, right? If we continue to do that, we're going to be getting b z and negative a z, negative a b z squared. And finally, z, uh, c times z squared is going to give me c z squared. This is also zero, which means the coefficient of z squared is zero, which means c minus a b minus a i over c all multiply by z squared equals zero, which indicates that this whole thing is equal to zero. That gives us another equation. Notice that we only have three variables, a, b, and c, which is nice, right? 
So we got rid of the, uh, the other variables. Cool, cool. So we got one more thing to do, which is the coefficient of z. To get a z, you must multiply bz by that, so it's going to be negative bi over c, z. And is there another way to get a z? Yes, c multiplied by negative az is going to give us minus ac multiplied by z equals 0. And again, by factoring out negative bi over c minus ac equals 0. And from here, we get our third equation. Make sense? You have three equations, three unknowns. You should be able to solve it, hopefully. But if you do solve it, you're going to get the following. You're going to get from here, let me give you the solutions. A equals I, B equals 0, C equals I, and D equals negative I. A very, very special scenario. Well, I didn't solve for D. I kind of got rid of it. But the thing is, if you know A, then you know D, right? Because A plus D is equal to 0. Cool, cool. Let's go ahead and plug these in and see what we get from here. I'm also going to be looking at results from Wolfram Alpha, but z to the fifth plus z minus i can be factored into uh, z cubed plus a z squared, z cubed plus i z squared plus c b, b z plus c. By the way, b is zero, so we're just going to write i for c, which is our constant. And the other factor, you can kind of guess what the other factor is going to be like at this point. You, that's definitely going to have a z squared. And then I do have uh, a, which is 1, right? a is i, actually. So that's going to be, let me see. Yes, i, so that's going to be a minus a, minus i z. And finally, notice that we need to get a minus 1, right? Oh, by the way, this was an i. Never mind, this is supposed to be a minus 1. Make sense? So this is a way to factor it, and by setting this equal to 0, you can basically look at it separately like, okay, this is a cubic, that's a quadratic. Now, solving the cubic is obviously going to be a great deal. You can get rid of the z squared, use Cardano's, Ferrari's, Tartaglia's, whatever, whoever, whichever Italian guy you want to name it with or after. Uh, you can use that method or the cubic, the cubic formula and find the roots. And one of the roots is actually pretty interesting because it happens to be a multiple of i. All right? Anyways, but let's focus on the quadratic because its solutions shouldn't be that hard to find. Let's go ahead and set this equal to zero. And from here, if you use the quadratic formula, you get negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is negative one, plus minus, I mean, minus four ac plus four. And that gives you, guess what? Square root of 3, which is a real number. Yay. And then it's kind of like a reversed uh, thing. Plus minus root 3 plus i over 2. And you can basically write these as root 3 over 2 plus 1 half i. Or negative root 3 over 2 plus 1 half i. And you can definitely write these in polar form. But if you just think about this, z sub 1 can actually be written as e to the power i times pi over 6. Think about it, cosine 30 is root 3 over 2, and pi over 6 is 30. Make sense? And obviously the other one is going to be 5 pi over 6, and when you plug them in, they're going to satisfy the equation. But let's go ahead and take a look at some solutions. First, Wolfram Alpha is going to give us a complex map. Yay, that's kind of nice. This is the complex plot for z to the fifth plus z minus i, which is pretty interesting right and then two of the solutions that we just talked about these are kind of like the good ones and the bad ones because these are approximate but focus on the one in the middle because I'm gonna give you the exact value of that solution and here we go and this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe I'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye